Hi everyone, this is Fulton at Laser, Lou Air Student Radio. This is my music room for Tuesday, January um, 26th. Um, yeah, uh, I'd like to start this video with a land acknowledgement. Um, I currently thrive, live, and just absolutely uh, profit and make my living off of uh, Skagit, Snohomish, and uh, Sklallam land. Um, you know, always gotta represent that. And uh, one more thing, you know, support your local Frisbee team. Um, this is PLU uh, Rain, my jersey from last year. I only played on B team and at barbecue and some fall tournaments, but nevertheless, uh, support your local Frisbee team. Cool guys. Um, new captains are really nice. Anyhow, um, with that said, um, where are my five shorts? Um, but yeah, regards to music, um, I, haven't been I haven't had the chance to listen to a lot. I've been super busy. Um, but I've been able to slide some things in here and there and uh, let's see what we got here um, So tool 10,000 days. I've been itching to like really start listening to tool again They uh, spawned a, like my whole kind of like music phase. I guess I don't know um, Shout out to my friend Ryan Stark, um, but yeah They're fun um, You know the more you listen to them, the more you can realize they sound the same and you can't really do them as much anymore, but um 10,000 Days is a great album. The package is amazing. It's lenticular, or I mean, not lenticular, um, I forgot what it's called, but you can look at the art and it's like kind of 3D stereoscopic or something, something like that. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, I had an itching to listen to 10,000 Days and this is just such a great album. Um, let me pull out the track listing here. Um, personally, my favorite songs off the album are, uh, Jombie, um, Rosetta Stoned, Intention and Riding 2 really come in at, come in, it's just such a different pace than the first half of the album. And of course The Pot, I mean, that's one of Tool's most popular songs. Um, but it's so good. Ah, it's, it's a great groove and hard rock pop song. Um, but yeah, Tool's a fun band. Um, they're definitely not divine and, like, mystic as some people put them out to be, but they're definitely onto something. They, uh, they enter that creative space and really produce something amazing, I think. Um, and that's why they're so popular, because they make pretty accessible, fun, progressive music. Um, like I said, more Caius, Caius Wretch. This is their first album. I listened to Sons of Caius last last two weeks, you know. Um, but this is the follow-up. They re-recorded -re some songs on here, um, such as uh, Cats and Jammer, um, and I believe uh, Beginning of What's About to Happen, Highway 74. And then Isolation, which is originally Isolation, Isolation, Desolation on Sons of Caius. Um, great first album. You can feel how they're getting more sludgy, more heavy, but still that hardcore punk sound, which, you know, they thought they were playing. Um, up next, uh, Delvin Lamar, Oregon Trio, uh, Close But No Cigar. This is an early, early pressing uh, CD. Fun fact, on the inside, I, I don't know if this is real, but Delvin himself and guitarist Jimmy Jones... Um, signed it, so I'll probably tag him in this and ask him. But yeah, some great, um, you know, Hammond B3, Oregon jazz, funk, instrumental, whatever you want to call it, R&B. Um, it's just so much fun. It's a great album. Um, the whole band is super tight. It's like they've been playing with each other forever. Um, I think I've shown them on here before, but they're definitely one of those Seattle bands you gotta see. Um, you know, Seattle jazz scene or whatever. Um, and I'm still waiting for the chance to see them. Led Zeppelin 2, I showed this a few weeks ago. It, I don't know, it's, it's the perfect hard rock blues album that's made by British men. It's just so good, I can't, I can't get over it. It's, it's weird how accessible it is. I showed this last week again, I still listen to this. Electric Lady Land, Jimi Hendrix. Great, great stuff. Anyways, on to vinyl. Um, I've had the chance to listen to a lot of vinyl, but I got this in the mail. Steely Dan, The Royal Scam. An amazing album. Um, this rounds out my initial run of Steely Dan albums. Um, I don't think I have a chance of finding Two Against Nature or Everything Must Go on vinyl. Uh, sorry if my voice is a little weird. I just woke up. Um, but yeah, great. You know, this one, I explained it to my friend Felix as you in like, uh, in, in Naples. Uh, Italy, that's the vibe it, vibe it gives off, and you're looking at all the graffiti and you're trying to go to the National Archaeological Museum, but you just saw someone get shot. Um, yeah, an amazing album, super strong, 
um, some highlight tracks, for me at least, on uh, Blue Royal Scam. Uh, definitely the entire first side. Um, and then green earrings. Oh, the percussion is like, if, if percussion is playing, earrings glistening. And it's something so, you know, ingrained in our lives um, of seeing jewelry and emeralds and jewels and ah, just gems uh, shining and, you know, they, they reflect nerd. Um, remember that? back in the day, but just, you know, having a sound for that and a song and it works perfectly is absolutely stunning to me. Um, it's marvelous. Uh, also, Stanley Clark, this is his second album, um, Eponymous. God, he is an amazing bassist. Um, it's the perfect combination of jazz fusion, in my opinion. It's not the weird 70s, um, cop show that you would get with, um, what is his name? Billy Cobham. But, um, you know, you get equally emotional tension and technical ability. Um, so musicianship is top notch. He's speaking through the bass, just as I bet Billy Cobham is through, you know, drums. But yeah, to me, it feels like it has more emotion on it. Um, you know, it's got Tony Williams on drums, which is amazing. amazing. And then Bill Connor's um, guitar playing on Life Suite is, oh, it's great. Um, but yeah, an essential jazz fusion album, I think. Um, if you don't know who Stanley Clark is, he's played with Chick Corea. Um, I think he played with Herbie Hancock at some point. I'll need to, you know, someone verify that. But nevertheless, great bassist. Um, as well, pulled this head and listened to it. I think I've shown it on here. Grover, Wa Grover Washington Jr. Inner City Blues. Just some jazz, a lot more uh, straight ahead and smoother than uh, Stanley Clark or even Steely Dan, but nevertheless, great musicianship off of Motown, amazing band backing him, and amazing arrangements um, by Grover. This one's gonna be a little shorter this week, I'm gonna try to keep it under 10 minutes. Uh, Herbie Hancock, Headhunters, um, self-explanatory, one of the greatest jazz funk fusion albums of all time, one of the most influential, uh, yeah, Herbie on keys to the back. Sort of looks familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, um, Watermelon Man all day. Uh, if you haven't seen Herbie explain the origins of Watermelon Man, you should check that out on YouTube. It's it's quite amazing how uh, it it just reflects um, you know something happened to experience the African American experience. Um, yeah, at least uh, Herbie's. Uh, interpretation of uh, what was going on when uh, he decided to write a song about something that happens to um, people like him. I don't really know how to express it because it's something I've never felt, um, which is something I think a lot of people need to observe and realize about their lives, um, especially if you're white, uh, like me, but also I'm mixed, so lots of confusing intersectionalities that occur I'll get off my soapbox. Primus, suck on this. I've shown this before. I've shown it when I got it. <laughs> um, I just needed some heavy grooves to get through the week. And uh, this album does it. It's my stomach growling. I just woke up like maybe less than 30 minutes ago. Um, it'll probably be like an hour or two after this video is posted. But suck on this, uh, doubling back to Primus. Um, I was reading an article of Tim Herb Alexander, or, or you know, or Jim Sing Jummer. Um, from 1993, and he said in 1993 that album best displays his drumming. Um, which, I mean, I agree, maybe. Um, that was before Tales from the Punch Bowl, which I think really exemplifies how unique of a drummer he is and how he really plays with emotion, like Bill Bruford, of course. And then he did list, you know, the Bruford King Crimson albums, Discipline, Beat, and Three of a Perfect Pair. Um, that influence is playing, so really shows uh, influence there. And uh, yeah, Suck On This is a great album. Uh, I think it's the best entry point for uh, anyone looking to get into Primus, really, because it displays um, what a powerful force they are live, especially in their early career, which really defined them as a band. Anyhow, this has been Fulton from Laser, Lou Air Student Radio. This is my music room. Be sure to check us out online at poe.edu slash laser, um, mass media.pou, EU, you know. Um, the links will be in the description. Subscribe to our YouTube. 
follow our Instagram, like this post, um, share with your friends, and, uh, you know, if you're listening to anything, you've made it this far, um, drop it down below. I'd love to hear what people are listening to, and then adding it to my list, and then never listening to it, or listening to it in about 10 years. So, if I've done that to you, you know who you are. Alright, have a wonderful day everyone. Hope your J-term is going well. Um, I'm about to go grind.